Hello and welcome to today's interview. We are with uh, Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA. We are looking at the various programs which they have. To help me look at this, as we interact with them, I have Katendi Wandi, who is Acting Manager uh, from Standards and Consumers Affairs. Welcome to today's interview. Uh, thank you very much, and hello, Faith, and hello to our viewers. Right. How is our uh, uh, statutory body doing? Oh, well, we are doing uh, well, and uh, we thank Zanis for giving us this opportunity to come and talk a little bit about ourselves. Right. We start with looking at this organ, this body. What is IBA? Uh, thank you very much, Faith. So IBA is a statutory body established through an act of parliament to regulate the broadcasting industry in Zambia. So the act that establishes the IBA is Act Number 17 of 2002. This act was uh, further amended in 2010 and in 2017. So the mandate of the IBA is to promote a diverse and uh, a plural and diverse broadcasting industry uh, in the country. So we have been in operation for 10 years now. In July, uh, uh, we started operations in July 2013. So we clocked 10 years of being operation wow. as I, uh, being in that's, operation as IBA. That's quite a milestone. We are looking mm -hmm. at this body, which is uh, backed by the law. Mm -hmm. What is the function of this body? Uh, thank you so much. So the functions of the IBA are stated in the Act. Uh, I can summarize them as uh, the first thing is IBA grants uh, licenses. Mm -hmm. So for a radio and television station to operate in the country, they need a license from uh, the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA. So in granting licenses, the IBA can also suspend, uh, cancel, renew a broadcasting license. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the IBA sets standards for broadcasting stations to follow. So when we have set the standards, then the IBA then monitors radio and television stations uh, to ensure that uh, these broadcasting stations are complying mm -hmm. to the set standards. Uh, apart from that, the IBA also receives and investigates on complaints regarding content that has been aired on uh, radio and TV stations. Mm -hmm. And another function of the IBA is the collection of television levy. Well, wow, that is quite a mouthful, and I'm sure we'll get back to some of those uh, mm. issues that you've mentioned. But we are looking at uh, these uh, stations and the span of 10 years. Mm -hmm. How many have you licensed so far? Mm. We have over 200 uh, radio and TV stations combined in the country. Mm. That is over 170 radio uh, stations and over 50 television stations countrywide. Okay. Um, we can come maybe to issues of acquiring a, a license. Mm -hmm. I'm sure one would want or one would wish to say they would want to have a license, maybe a, a radio station or a television station. How does one acquire this license? Yes, uh, it's important uh, uh, to establish these radio and television stations mm -hmm. uh, countrywide because uh, radio and TV stations give people access uh, to information. So for those that are interested in establishing a radio or a TV station, mm -hmm. the first step is um, you have to wait okay. for the IBA to put up an advert. Mm -hmm. So if you bring in an application, uh, when the IBA has not uh, put out an advert, uh, that application will, you know, will just tell you that please apply when the advert is out. Uh, that application will just help us understand or know that Oh, so there are people interested in setting up uh, a station mm -hmm. in these areas. Otherwise, the first step is for you to wait. Okay. So the IBA will put up a notice mm -hmm. that there are these frequencies available because as you may be aware, uh, in the issues of frequencies, we work uh, with other stakeholders, another stakeholder called Zikta. Okay. So when those frequencies are available, then the IBA will put up this advert and invite people to apply. Okay. So the advert will state where these frequencies are available, uh, in which districts, in which provinces, where uh, people can apply and when you have applied uh, the advert will give details of what you need to do for instance you need to attach a cover letter mm -hmm. uh, to your application you need to download an application form this application form can be found on our IBA website mm -hmm. then you need to attach uh, certain requirements that the IBA advert um, will, will state so in this advert uh, some of the requirements will include curriculum vitae's mm -hmm. uh, of the people that you are with in setting up uh, that station mm -hmm. if you are setting a commercial station then we will ask you to submit uh, your certificate of registration uh, from PACRA, you know, 
showing the shareholding. Mm -hmm. Then if it's a community station, we'll ask you to submit your certificate of registration. It could be from the Registrar of Societies mm -hmm. or from PACRA under Limited by Guarantee. Okay. Then we'll also ask you to submit a programming schedule because this one will show us what exactly uh, you are thinking of in terms of content and programming mm -hmm. for this particular station that you are setting up. Okay. Then you'll also be required to pay a stipulated fee, a non-refundable fee. So the amount will be stipulated in the advert uh, of which you'll be required to pay. Okay. So after that, then you have to wait until um, feedback is given on whether your application was successful or not. Okay. Wendy, you, you've spoken of frequencies and working you know, in partnership with Zikta. And all. What about a person from the rural area? How will they know? Are you there? Because it's not everyone who, mm -hmm. who can access you know, the internet. And all. Yes. If, let's say, I, wa I just wake up, I want to come up or form a radio station or come okay. up with a radio station. Okay. How do you get to those people? Uh, thank you very much. So first of all, our offices are also open okay. for those that just want to inquire about the licensing process, mm -hmm. uh, when the advert is coming out or what they should do when the advert is out. They are free to contact us at our offices and we'll give them uh, that information. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from the notice that mm -hmm. we uh, issue out in a newspaper mm -hmm. uh, of uh, wide circulation. We also use various platforms to make sure that this advert goes out. We also uh, do from time to time go into these places where frequencies have been advertised okay. and there we uh, you know sensitize the people that there are frequencies that have been advertised in your area yeah. so if you are willing to set up a radio station we are here come and talk to us and okay. uh, we are here to give you the information of how to go about the whole process. Maybe I can as well be interested. The fees you mentioned of, uh, you know, a fee attached to it. Mm -hmm. How easy is it or is it in a concept, uh, context where <laughs> everyone else can manage it? Uh, the the advert will set a fee. Okay. For instance, in the last application uh, process, mm. uh, a non-refundable fee of 3,000 kwacha uh, w was uh, stipulated in the advert. Okay. So this amount, you know, we... We'll state it there and we, we trust that uh, it's a fee that people can be able to raise okay. uh, for those intending to set up uh, radio TV stations. All viewers, in case you have just tuned in, we are talking and interacting with the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA. We're just looking at their programs and what they do. Let's take a break. Did you know that you've got the right to complain against any radio or television broadcast? Did you also know that every radio or television station has an obligation to respond and address your complaints? When aggrieved, the first step is to complain to the station not more than three months after the broadcast took place. It is expected that the station will respond reasonably to you, that is within 14 days. If not satisfied, then escalate your problem to the Independent Broadcasting Authority. We are at Mass Media Complex, Ali King, Carter Road, Box 32475, Lusaka, or call us on plus 260-211-250589 or visit our website at www.iba.org.zm IBA, promoting ethical and professional broadcasting. Welcome back. We are uh, interacting with Katendi Wandi, who is the Acting Manager, Standards and Consumers Affairs. You've looked and talked about these so many issues. Mm -hmm. But what are the guidelines when one is looking or want to, you know, acquire this license? What is, you know, your guidelines on that one? Okay, so um, the, the, the guidance mm -hmm. in terms of uh, applying for a radio and TV station exactly. is uh, what I have uh, explained, that mm -hmm. you need to wait uh, for IBA to set up or put up an advert. Mm -hmm. That's when you can apply mm -hmm. and then you attach the necessary documentations like CVs uh, and certificates of registration, a programming schedule uh, to your application. Mm -hmm. There's also a business plan that you would need to fill in mm -hmm. and the IBA has provided a dummy business plan which is on our website. Okay. Uh, this uh, dummy business plan gives you an idea of what exactly we are looking for in terms of information uh, for you that you need to submit meet mm -hmm. uh, in the business plan. Okay. So th those would be the guidelines in terms of applying for a radio or a TV uh, station right. license. 
So now here is a person who have applied, you've given them this license and they've started, you know, operating. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure as IBA to say these people that have acquired this license are complying with your standards? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Faith. So the IBA ensures compliance uh, through two units. Yeah. There's the inspectorate unit. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the standards and consumer affairs unit. Okay. Uh, so these units mandates are provided for in the act actually. Okay. So among the ways is uh, through monitoring of content, um, like at any time of the day, one of our inspectors is tuned into a radio uh, station or a TV station mm -hmm. and is uh, listening in to the content that is being aired. Okay. So uh, in monitoring this uh, content, there is a, a, a monitoring post review or mm -hmm. live. So the live is where an inspector is tuned into and they are listening to the content. In post mm -hmm. um, uh, monitoring review, this is when the IBA asks for recordings uh, aired within a specified period of time mm -hmm. and then the inspectors listen in to that content. Mm -hmm. So uh, apart from that, then uh, there's also visitations. Our inspectors uh, from time to time visit radio and TV stations okay. just to ensure uh, compliance. Mm -hmm. Then there's also through the uh, complaints procedure, this is under the uh, consumer rights and protection. Okay. So this is where members of the public who are also a big stakeholder mm -hmm. in terms of uh, ensuring stations are complying yeah. because when they hear something on radio or TV mm -hmm. uh, that according to them is not sitting well with ethical uh, standards mm -hmm. then they are able to complain to the authority okay. uh, through a complaints procedure which I hope we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. All right, I, you've mentioned of these other issues that you, you've put in place. And I know for sure that you're backed by the law. How is your enforcement in, term, in case, you know, this radio station do not or does not comply with your standards? Okay. So in terms of com, uh, enforcement, yeah. the Act has mandated the IBA, uh, you know, to enforce uh, compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our functions is to grant, renew, suspend mm -hmm. a broadcasting license or even cancel a broadcasting license okay. uh, in the event uh, that there is really need to go that far. Mm -hmm. uh, so otherwise, we have also now developed um, the guidelines mm -hmm. on the enforcement uh, of compliance breaches. Okay. Okay. So in these guidelines, we have outlined step-by-step -step actions okay. that the authority will take. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that uh, in the past, maybe uh, people may have just heard about the IBA when there was a suspension mm. of a broadcasting license. Yeah. But now with the coming in of these guidelines, uh, even the IBA knows uh, the step-by-step -step actions that they should take. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if a station is found to be in breach of something, mm -hmm. uh, then maybe the first step would be a, a letter. Okay. okay. Then step two would be maybe another letter, okay. uh, encouraging or requiring the station to make good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then after that, maybe the third step would be invite the station to a hearing. Okay. So these step-by-step -step actions ha have now been outlined in the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So those are the steps that we take uh, in terms of enforcing uh, okay. compliance. And they speak to different areas. They speak to content, they speak to infrastructure, okay. they speak to um, payment of annual uh, license fees mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, these guidelines is um, helping us in terms of being objective mm -hmm. and fair when dealing with our licenses. Okay. Uh, when you give uh, maybe a station, it could be a radio station or a television station, mm -hmm. uh, you suspend them. Is there a time frame in which you can review their case or maybe it mm -hmm. is just, you just leave it as it were, not until you go through all those steps so, and stages? Yes, those were some of the issues that we were dealing with uh, mm -hmm. in the past, especially when a station uh, has been suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we give um, requirements to a station to comply with. So the suspension is then lifted after they have met certain conditions. So maybe it's put in place this and that mm -hmm. uh, in your studios and when that is done, then uh, that is lifted. In the guidelines also, uh, which I hope that our viewers can also take time to download on our website mm. and just familiarize themselves with these guidelines. Yeah. We have given all these time frames and step-by-step -step actions that the authority takes. Okay. Looking at the guidelines, we have well elaborated them for sure. But are there any benefits which, you know, are accrued <laughs> to these guidelines? Thank you so much, Faith. Yes, there are benefits because in the past, 
when station A and station B commit a similar breach, mm -hmm. you'll find that the way the authority handles station A yeah. will be different uh, with the manner station B will be handled. Yeah. And yet they committed a similar breach. Exactly. So, but with the guidelines in place, uh, st both station A and station B and the authority know that uh, the first step the authority will take is step one, a letter will come. Yeah. Step two, another letter will come. Step three, the authority will call us for a hearing mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. So this ensures that uh, there is fairness mm -hmm. in the way we are dealing with uh, our licenses now. Uh, we are also being objective okay. uh, when dealing with our licenses mm -hmm. and uh, more efficient and effective in terms of our work when uh, dealing with issues of non-compliance because okay. now the guidelines have outlined what mm -hmm. needs to be done. So the authority knows the steps that we will take through the guidelines and even uh, the licensees and other stakeholders will look at the guidelines and they will know the steps that are being taken okay. uh, for a particular breach. So it's no longer that when that station did this, mm -hmm. no, but that one was suspended, that one was only given a warning, exactly. uh, it's no longer the case. Okay, so now we are looking at uh, this uh, particular station, mm -hmm. you know, which has produced or maybe has come up with something that a person is not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. How does a person you know, complain uh, to you or how do mm -hmm. they come to you? Is yes. there a procedure that one has to follow? Yes, uh, there is a procedure. So, you know, uh, I always like to say that when a complaint comes to a radio or a TV station, mm -hmm. a radio and TV station uh, should not shun that complaint because it means that somebody out there takes the time exactly. to watch your TV program mm -hmm. or to tune into your radio station uh, and listen to your content. It means that you are being followed. Mm -hmm. So when somebody complains, I think it's a time to, to take interest in, in the complaint mm -hmm. so that you may take measures uh, in terms of improving yourselves as a radio or a TV station. Okay. So when you have a complaint, the first step is uh, go to the radio or TV station so that you give them an opportunity for mm -hmm. them to attend to your complaint. Okay. okay. So when you have gone to the radio or TV station, you register your complaint there. The radio or TV station there has 14 days uh, to respond to you. Okay. So if they don't respond to you within 14 days, or they do respond to you in 14 days, but um, you are not satisfied in the manner that they have responded to you, mm -hmm. then you can escalate the complaint to IBA. Okay. And IBA will also within 14 days uh, seek to address uh, that complaint. Okay. So the first step, please go to the TV or radio station consent mm -hmm. and register your complaint there. And uh, if you're not happy mm -hmm. or uh, with the manner they have uh, attended to you or they did not attend to you at all, mm -hmm. then you can now escalate the complaint to the IBA. All right. Well mm -hmm. said. Wendy, in closing, uh, how can one get in touch with you in case they have anything that they want to share with you? Uh, thank you very much. So for those uh, in Lusaka or if you have an opportunity to travel to Lusaka, our offices are at the mass media complex. Uh, the ground floor of Zanis building. That's where you can find us. And uh, for those on uh, social media, we are also on Facebook, uh, Independent Broadcasting Authority dash IBA Zambia. Please follow our page so that you learn more about events and uh, activities that we are doing at the authority. Mm -hmm. And then also, I just want to encourage those that have uh, uh, just been licensed to set up radio or TV stations to take advantage of the tax uh, holiday uh, okay. that has been given by government okay. on broadcasting equipment, mm. which is running for a period of three years up to uh, 31st December in 2026. Wow. So please take advantage in, to acquire the broadcasting equipment that you need mm -hmm. to set up your stations. And even those that are already in existence, it's an opportunity to acquire this equipment uh, so that you are able to upgrade uh, your equipment in your various studios. Wow. So uh, other than that, it's mm -hmm. also just to thank you and to thank Zanis as a whole for giving us this platform to come and talk a little bit about the work of the IBA. Wow. Well said. We, we hope to host you again in our studio so that we can even look at other things uh, which uh, the, the broadcasting yeah. is doing. Thank you so much. All right. Thank well, you. that was well said by Katendi Wende, who is the Acting Manager Standards and Consumers Affairs from the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA. From me, Faith Mutale, and the entire production team, it's goodbye.